Well, good morning, everyone. Folks are still coming on, um, but it's nine o'clock. We'll go ahead and start. Welcome to St. Paul's Online to the fifth Sunday in Lent as we're on this Lenten journey together. Um, welcome to St. Paul's. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. His mercy endures forever. Hear the commandments of God to God's people. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of bondage. You shall have no other gods but me. Amen. Lord have mercy. You shall not make for yourself any idol. Amen. Lord have mercy. You shall not invoke with malice the name of the Lord your God. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Honor your father and your mother. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not commit murder. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not commit adultery. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not steal. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not be a false witness. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not covet anything that belongs to your neighbor. Amen. Lord, have mercy. In silence, we call to mind our sins. Let us confess, confess our, our sins. sins. Merciful God, we have sinned in what we have thought and said, <clears throat> in the wrong we have done, and in the good we have not done. We have sinned in ignorance. We have sinned in weakness. We have sinned through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry. We repent and turn to you. Forgive us for our Savior Christ's sake, and renew our lives to the glory of your name. Amen. Through the cross of Christ, God have mercy on you, pardon you, and set you free. Know that you are forgiven. 
and be at peace. God strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you alone can bring into order the unruly wills and affections of sinners. Grant your people grace to love what you command and desire what you promise. That among the swift and varied changes of the world, our hearts may surely there be fixed where true joys are to be found. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Jeremiah. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No, no, no longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, know the Lord. For they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. How shall a young man cleanse his way? By keeping to your words. With my whole heart I seek you. Let me not stray from your commandments. I treasure your promise in my heart that I may not sin against you. Blessed are you, O Lord. Instruct me in your statutes. With my lips I will recite with all the, all the judgments of your mouth. I have taken greater delight in the way of your decrees than in all manner of riches. I will meditate on your commandments and give attention to your ways. My delight is in your statutes. I will not forget your word. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but he was appointed by the one who said to him, You are my son. Today I have begotten you. As he says also in another place, you are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered, and having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him, having been designated by God a high priest, according to the order of Melchizedek. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the Gospel of John. Now, among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from the Bethsaida, Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Who serves me, the Father will honor. Now, my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour. No, for this is the reason I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it, and said that it was thunder. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was made to die. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. It was 3.30 a.m. in the morning, and I lay awake listening to the haunting chants coming from the local mosque, calling all Muslims to prayer. I pulled myself out of bed, and I got dressed, and I grabbed my backpack, and I headed downstairs to meet up with my classmates to walk to the old walled city of Jerusalem. We walked in silence to the Damascus gate and all along the way, we caught a glimpse of the city in an entirely different light. Merchants were opening their shops, sweeping their stoops, rearranging their merchandise. The old city, typically crowded with Jews, Muslims and Christians was quiet and subdued as it was waking up for the day. Walking in silence allowed us to prepare ourselves for what was about to take place. We'd been to the old city of Jerusalem many times on this trip, but this day was set aside in our class schedule to walk the historic Stations of the Cross in the same place where Jesus literally walked them years ago. Each of us had signed up to read a meditation and we took turns carrying a large wooden cross along the way. We wound through the maze-like streets of cobblestone until we found ourselves in the place where the journey began, the first station. Jesus is condemned to death and we were on our way, the Jesus way the way of dying and rising again. John's gospel says Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. This way the scripture refers to, our way, if we follow him, is the way of Jesus, the way of dying and rising again. The way Jesus teaches about, not only with his words, but with his own life, is the way of dying and rising, dying and rising, dying and rising again. In today's gospel, Jesus is teaching his disciples during Passover, the last week of his life. He says, very truly, I tell you, 
unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. He's trying to prepare his disciples for what is getting ready to happen. His death is near. But he wants his disciples to know that in the kingdom of God, death is not an end. Not an end at all. But in fact, death is necessary. It is required. It is essential before new life can come forth. Jesus is teaching them, death is part of life. But as you go through it, I want you to trust me, to trust the process, to trust God. Much easier said than done. And then he goes on to show them exactly what his teaching means. He's tried, convicted, flogged, and tortured. And as he's going through this, living out his own teaching, his disciples are on the run for their lives, dropping faith out of their pockets like pebbles. We're not a lot different from the 12. If given the choice, we too will run from anything that looks like death. And who would blame us? It's human nature to want to protect our lives just as they are. But Jesus, our teacher, the one we follow says, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Through dying, we will live. That's the teaching. No matter how great the promises of what lies on the other side of death are, the sign-up sheet for death remains empty. No names, no one stepping up, no thank you. But if this last year has taught us anything, it has taught us we don't have to sign up for death. Death shows up on its own. This last year, death has shown up in so many ways. The literal deaths of 541,000 people just in the United States alone. Some of us have experienced the death of what we thought our country was and who we thought our leaders were. And we've also experienced the death of carefree living the death of casually meeting a friend for lunch or feeling that we have any ability to predict what the next month might hold. This last year, we've been required to die to many things. Lent and life has put us face to face with the way, the Jesus way, the way of dying, yes but also the way of rising. Unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Jesus teaches us that in the kingdom of God, death is not an end. It's never an end. Death is necessary before new life can come forth. A grain of wheat cannot grow unless it dies. For the seed to do what was meant to do, it must be given up. It must fall to the earth and be buried. It must sit down there in the dark until its hour comes when it will swell and crack and hatch new life. A green shoot will climb toward the sun until it breaks through the earth, becoming a golden stalk of wheat that bears fruit and produces wheat to feed others. 
Pain and death are some of the most powerful tools for our transformation. It's often how our hearts are broken open, cracked open, and made new again. This is the journey. The spiritual journey we are on, the way of Jesus, the way of dying and rising. And this last year has put us in touch with the dying in many forms. And I wonder with you today, what will the rising look like? I wonder with you today as we hold God's promises fully, knowing that death is not the end, I wonder what new life God will bring forth in me and in you and in our systems that have broken down. I wonder what new life God will bring about after the death this pandemic has brought. We are on the way, the Jesus way, the way that leads through death to new life. And as we walk this way with one another in this season of Lent and this season of life, I pray that we can trust the process that we are on, the journey, the way of Jesus that promises us that death is not the end, but that God will bring forth new life out of death in ways that we maybe could never have hoped for or even imagined. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please add your prayers in the chat box. O voice of heaven, come for our sake. We ask to be open to your by your thunderous words. Touching the law within us, written on our hearts, you listen for our response. We know you. Claimed as covenant people, we know we must follow. We pray for the surrender, strength to surrender our life to you. We pray your love be made manifest in our waking hours, that our moments are lived fully, allowing the depth of such sacrifice to guide us, that the body may glorify the life given for all. We abide in faith. <clears throat> we pray for the courage to surrender our life to you. From the mystery of your spirits hovering, the world continues to evolve, ever expanding the rhythm of divine synergy. May our living serve the planet, finding ways to restore healing to the world. 
We pray for ingenuity to surrender a way of life for all life. We long for your peace as we continue to struggle with letting go in obedience that feels like loss. May your wisdom and mercy forever guide our way of being in the world, cleansing us, freeing us. We pray for unending trust to uncover your life, our life in you. May our own reverent submission bring new life within us. We ask the spirits stirring in the hearts and labors of Bishop Michael Curry, Bishop Kim Lucas, Pastor Felicia Smith Grabeel, and all clergy. We uplift the faithful laity in their sacrifice of service of love. We pray for holy inspiration in surrendering our life to you. From every corner of the world, we glorify your name. May our voices reach the voice of heaven and proclaim the power of light through these one warning wilderness days, waning wilderness days. The Church of England and her faithful raise their voices in praise. The congregations of Good Shepherd Episcopal Church in Centennial and St. Peter the Apostle Episcopal Church in Pueblo and their people join the hymn. We pray for the joy that comes in surrendering our lives to you. We pray for those killed in the most recent Atlanta shooting and for their families and the friends as they grieve their loss. Xiao Jia Tan, Dao Yo Fong, Sun Chung Park, Hyun Chung Grant, Sun Cha Kim, Yong E Yu, Delaney Ashley Yon, and Paul Andre Michaels. God, give us the strength to stand up to anything that denies dignity to another person. Safe travel for Jaden. Continued healing for Jean, Carol, Christine, and Patsy. Travel prayers for Brian, Jack, and Nona. Prayers for Grampy, who is in the hospital. For Zach. Special prayers for brother Jim the Greenwald family, Christy and Sam, thanksgiving for the blessings that surround our lives. Pray for those mourning it in Atlanta and for those who live in fear every day just because of I, the their identity. Open our hearts to all. Prayers for the Atlanta slain. Prayers for those in danger of being wounded or killed because of their color. Prayers for all those mourning loved ones who have died. Prayers for Mike. Prayers for all our brothers and sisters of Asian descent who are feeling alienated by the actions of racism and hate, and also for those driven to act out their own fear with acts of violence. Prayers for us as we face our mortality. Give us courage to trust in you. Thanks and gratitude for safe travel for our extended family who have come to visit. Prayers for our beloveds who are in hard places. May we face our deaths with hope for resurrection into something brand new. Healing prayers for Julia, Margaret, Michael, and Dana. Continued prayers for Nick and Kelly. Prayers for Kelly's upcoming surgery. Sustained by your bountiful spirit, we are renewed. We rest in your great compassion and abide in the grace of your consistent presence. When our souls are troubled, we lean on the promise of your healing and mercy. We pray for life that comes when we surrender all to you. For our sake, O oh Lord, you will always come. For your sake, we will always respond. We pray for all those loved into eternal life. We follow with the blessed assurance of resurrection into your everlasting love. We pray for the love that comes from your surrendering your life for ours. Amen. 
I invite you to take yourselves off mute as we share a sign of peace with one another. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And all also with you. Peace, peace, everybody. Peace, everybody. Peace, everyone. God's peace, everyone. Peace. everyone. peace. 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 We are grateful to you, O oh God, for all the joys and blessings of this life. Everything we have and everything we are comes from you. Help us give back for the furtherance of your kingdom out of the generosity that springs from our love and gratitude. All, all things, things come of you, Lord, 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 and of your and own. Of your own. own. Life is short, and we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who make the journey with us. So be swift to love and make haste to be kind. And the blessing of God who made us and who loves us and who travels with us be with you now and forevermore. Amen. 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 peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Thanks be to God. And good morning to all of you. I'd welcome all of you who are worshiping with us, maybe for the first time or who are new to our community of faith. We're glad that you're here. If you'd like to learn more about what we have going on during the week or about our community, we invite you to sign up for our weekly communication called the Epistle 
by sending an email to the church office and asking to be put on the mailing list. Welcome. And in this Holy Week, we have several um, tasks for you that are pretty simple, but necessary. First is to pick up your palms either today or Thursday from 9 a.m. till noon, today 10 to 11.30 at the church. And then take a picture of yourself holding your palm uh, in some place or situation like walking or riding your bike or standing in your garden or standing in your living room or whatever it is. Take a picture of your palm so that we can make <coughs> so we can make a um, a glory laud and honor celebratory um, video for for that. <coughs> and Jim, no fair using the one. Well, I guess you have to use the ones there because you don't have any. You can't pick I them up. I have a plethora. Got, I'll just you use have them. a plethora. That's right. <laughs> so you just go scoop one up off the ground. Yeah. On Tenebrae at seven p.m. That's the Wednesday, March 31st, <clears throat> we'll have several readings. If you'd like to be a reader, let me know. And oops, and then on uh, Monday, Thursday, send photos by Tuesday, March 23rd. That's this coming Tuesday of you washing feet or of you doing some kind of foot washing service in the world and send those, um, there's a, a email address in the epistle, but if you can't find that, just send it to the office and we'll get it to the right place. But that's a Tuesday deadline for that. And um, then the final thing is not this week, but next week, so you have a whole week to do this, and that's send photos of you in an Easter bonnet. And it could be a manly Easter bonnet or an androgynous Easter bonnet or anything that feels to you celebratory and Easter-like, and send those to me by um, March 31st, which is Wednesday of next week. This is a great resource for those of you who are looking to get your COVID vaccines. Um, it's Vaccine Finder, and you can find this link in our epistle, um, or call the 24-hour hotline, 877-268-8. Uh, Two nine two six. as we all work to be vaccinated. The Hispanic Community Voices <clears throat> Impact of COVID-19 uh, documentary will be shown on Thursday, March 25th at 7 p.m. on Zoom. And uh, that's this coming week also. So join us for that, for the virtual screening of that. And the Zoom link, I believe, is in the epistle. Yeah, it is in the epistle. And then after that, the next Thursday, using the same Zoom link, or actually it's the Thursday the 8th, a couple weeks, using the same uh, Zoom link, join us for a session on how to uh, help out Hispanic residents of Larimer County. This Wednesday night, we have a sung Compline service. Um, we invite you to join us. It's a beautiful way to end the day. It begins at 8 p.m. on Zoom and lasts for about 20 minutes as we pray with one another before bed. The Lenten Community Reflection and Prayer Project needs you. Please put something up, uh, create a prayer ribbon or uh, fill a little plaque out with things that you've lost and things that you've gained in this COVID time, or uh, create an art project and get Phyllis Joukowsky to help you out with how to put it up on the fence. And her email address is, is here. It's also in the epistle. We have our Lenten study that continues today at 10.30. Uh, learning How to See with Brian McLaren, Jackie Lewis, and Richard Rohr. You can come regardless of whether you've been to any of the previous sessions, and we invite you to join us today. Sunday School will meet from 10 to 10.30 virtually on Zoom, and the link is in the Sunday Call to Worship and in the Epistle. 
other opportunities to join together with each other this week our win weekly Tuesday morning prayer at 8 a.m. Our Wednesday 1130 Zoom hangout. And then, of course, Compline at 8 p.m. on Wednesday night. Anyone celebrating a birthday or wedding anniversary? Ah, Jim Pasula has raised his hand. Let me put us on gallery here and see if I see any other hands. Anyone else in addition to Jim? Birthday. Birthday. Excellent, Jim. Happy birthday. On well, Saturday. let us all. How many, what? On Saturday. On Saturday. Great. We hope you have a great week leading up to your birthday. Let's all raise our hands and blessing to Jim as he prepares to celebrate. Oh God, our times are in your hands. Look with favor on your servant Jim as he begins another year. Grant that he may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen his trust in your goodness. And thank you for the gift that he is to his wife and to his friends and to all who know him. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Happy birthday, Jim. Well, thank you. Well, we're now going to break off into some smaller groups to visit with one another. If you take the opportunity to leave us now, we hope you have a great week this coming week. And um, we'll look forward to seeing you next week for Palm Sunday. <laughs>